guys. Um, today is December 15th, so Vlogmas Day 14 for most people, Vlogmas Day 3 for me. In honor of the fact that it's Vlogmas Day 14 and also the first day of finals here at Nova, I have 14 of my study and finals hacks to share with you guys. So yeah, let's get going. All of these tips are things that I either A, do or B, attempt to do and like the degree of its success of execution is questionable, but I do attempt to do it. They all usually pretty much work for me. So I just wanted to share them with you. Tip number one, uh, I always like to plan ahead. I know it's so stupid to tell people plan ahead, but write a schedule, whether it's like written out in your planner or on a whiteboard, which I do have, which I'm sure you've seen, write it down. Write down the days things are due. Write down when you want to get it done. Write down very specific things like I want to study um, 10 of my vocab terms or I want to write the part of my paper on the bioethics specifically of liver transplants. Sorry, that's what's on my mind because I'm actually writing a paper about the bioethics of transplants. But be very specific so that you can't be like, yeah, I kind of studied for bio so I can move on now. I use the Todoist app and I always write down, like it gives you the option for seven days ahead and I always put down like study specifically this chapter of bio. So I don't just say study bio, I write study bio chapter 14. If you write things down specifically, it's a better way for you to hold yourself accountable. Tip number two, also kind of silly, to say but it is really important but always verify the details of your exam check your syllabus make sure you're paying attention in class you're because your professors tend to move things around or at least mine do so a lot of my finals went from being actual sit down exams to take homes and if you don't pay attention to that kind of information um you end up showing up to a class or showing up to a classroom where you don't have an exam tip number three um Never have more than four cups of coffee in a day. I know it's final season and my friend had sent, hold on, let me see if I can find it. It might've been a Snapchat, so I don't have it anymore. But my friend had sent me a picture of all the coffee cups that are literally piled up in the library garbage. But A, plastic's bad. B, your body does not need that much caffeine. One or two cups max is probably good, but also like, Hydrate, drink lots of water. Your brain and body will literally thank you. Tip number four, my favorite, take breaks. <laughs> take lots of breaks, go for a walk. Walk to the bathroom, take a lap around your room. Walk up and down a flight of stairs in the library. Get up out of your chair because your butt probably hurts, um, your brain hurts, your legs are probably going numb, because if you're anything like me, you always sit, I always sit cross-legged whenever I'm doing anything, so my ankles, my feet always go numb, like I, they're tingling right now, so get up, go for a walk, if it's nice weather outside, go for a walk outside, which I can't say is the same for Villanova right now because it's raining. Take like five minute breaks, take 10 minute breaks, 15 minute breaks, go for a walk. The, the motion will reinvigorate your mind. So if you're able to take 45 minutes, which works if you plan ahead, go to the gym, go for a run, get your body moving a little bit more than just a little walk. So yeah. Tip number five, also another one of my favorites, bring snacks wherever you go to study. The healthier the better, but sometimes it doesn't happen, I get it. It is final season and it's very unrealistic. Snacks in general, good. Healthy snacks, even better. Tip number six is just a personal thing, but I tend to avoid the library at all costs during final season. I know a lot of people like to study in there, it is quiet and the library is studious it's a good place to study why not there you're surrounded by books you're also surrounded by tons of people cramming but that's like the exact reason why I don't go to the library because I like people watching and watching other people cram or cry in the library is very entertaining for me so I like to sit down in my room like hole up in here for a whole seven days and just stay here and grind like 
We grind. We grind, yeah. Tip number six goes hand in hand with taking breaks. Don't study the same material for more than two hours at a time. Break your studying up into chunks. Your brain is gonna thank you, you're gonna thank you, you're not gonna lose your mind. You might, but you most likely will not lose your mind. So if you're studying, say, for your ethics exam and your bio exam, but also your history exam, do an hour of bio, then switch, do an hour of ethics, then switch, do an hour of history, because you don't really want to sit in the same chair and just straight cram about like Napoleon for five hours straight. Nobody wants to do that. So break it up. Now we're in the actual studying. So tip number eight, reorganize your notes. You should start doing this way before final season, but sometimes stuff happens and it just, you think you're going to and you don't. This is part of what I do. But rewriting notes is super helpful for me, especially when you're taking notes on like readings and then you have in-class notes from lectures. I like to kind of combine them and see where things like align and are supposed to connect and make those connections like physically on paper. So I do a lot of color coding, whether it be with markers or highlighters or colored pens. I like to rewrite things because rewriting it is a good way for me to remember. So find out, I mean, if you want to rewrite, that's a study tip from me. But another thing is just learn what study habits work best for you. Because rewriting isn't for everyone. Sometimes it's just a waste of time because you're rewriting and not taking anything away from it. But there are other things out there that work for people. So find what works for you and stick to it. Tip number nine. This one I just started doing because bio is really kicking my butt. But write down the things that you don't know. When I was studying for bio exams, I would take out a sheet of paper and when I was going through the chapter, I would just like highlight the things that I didn't know or didn't understand because writing it down helped me remember it and also gave me a little cheat sheet because all the other stuff I either understood well or understood enough to take an exam on it. That's Lauren tip number nine. Tip number 10 is what I believe is called the Feynman technique. And so the Feynman technique is essentially that you should study like you're going to present it. A lot of people say that you should study to present it to a child, which works, but I always think of it like present it to someone who isn't taking the class. If you're able to present it and fill in the little gaps that explain things, you're most likely going to be able to sit down in that exam and be able to answer questions on it because you really know it down to the smallest details. Tip number 11. I now ran out of fingers to put up for tip number 11. But tip number 11 is put away all your distractions. I am so bad at doing this. I know I am supposed to. This is part of the ones that I'm like, I the success of execution is questionable. Here. Put away all your distractions, whether that be this or if you're studying out of a textbook and it's this, um, put it away. Put it on the other side of your room. I always make Alyssa hold my phone and until I'm like done, I'll say at 2.30 I can get my phone again. If you're going to just get up and go over and pick it up again and that's not going to work for you, there are apps that you can put on your computer or your phone that let you or that block you from opening certain other apps such as Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat. If you're on your computer but you know you're not supposed to get distracted, there are apps I know on Chrome that block you from like visiting YouTube so that you can actually study. So I'm a stinker and my camera stopped filming part of this. Yay. Tip number 12. Again, kind of silly, but go to sleep. If it's 1.30 in the morning, I promise you, you're not absorbing any more information out of that textbook. Do yourself a solid and just go to bed. What would be more embarrassing than staying up really late cramming the night before and then oversleeping your alarm the next morning and completely missing your exam. So go to bed. Tip number 13. This is something that I actually learned in my public speaking class. We were talking about how for some people their stress requires that they need to be more pumped up because their stress makes them very tired and overwhelmed. And for others, your stress and your nerves actually makes you like a jittery little bug and you need to calm down. So figure out which one you are, because when you determine which one you are, that determines whether you need more like meditative exercises to bring yourself down, 
or like you need to go sprint a lap to try to get your energy levels up before that exam. Finally, tip number 14. Make sure you get to the classroom at least 15 minutes in advance because sometimes professors will let you start early. Otherwise, get there just so you can settle down, sharpen your pencils, drink your water, and get a chance to breathe in the space. Go to the bathroom because that's always, you know, nervous pee. She's a thing. Those are my 14 tips for Vlogmas Day 14 and the beginning of finals week. So to everyone who is about to tackle finals, I wish you the best of luck and you are going to absolutely kill it. So I will see you all tomorrow on Vlogmas Day 4. Thank you for watching. Bye.